is no moon and it is the disappearance day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Gadadhar Pandits. So there was very beautiful bhajan that Srila Prabhupada always chanted on the disappearance days of the great Vaishnavas. So we'll sing that bhajan, Jaya Nila Premadana. If you've got your devices, you can search it and follow along. Sangana Paya Kande Naru 
Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sila Prabhupada Ki Iskan Samtapakatari Divine Grace Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai Nitya Lira Vishwam Shapad is Divine Grace Sila Bhakti Saran Saraswati Thakur Sila Prabhupada Ki Ananda Gauri Vaishnava Nitya Ki Sad Goswami Prabhu Ki Nama Charja Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Shikaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Go, Shama Kun Radha Kun, Giri Govardhan Ki, Braja Bhumi Vrindavan Dham Ki, Grantara Srimad Bhagavad Dham Ki, Sri La Bhakti Mano Thakur Thiruba Maha Mahotsav Ki, Sri La Gadar Har Pandit Thiruba Maha Mahotsav Ki, Nitai Gavu Premanandi, All Glories to the Asamada Bodhis, All Glories to the Asamada Bodhis, all glories to the Assembly of All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. All glories to you, Sri the Prabhupada. So today is a very, very special day. The Amavasya New Moon, Day of Jaist. This is the disappearance day of Satchitanand Bhakti Mano Thakur and the uh, holy disappearance day of Srila Gadadhar Pandit. Hmm. So for Gadadhar Pandit, we chant Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda. 
and with Srila Bhakti Mano Thakur Namo Bhakti Vino Daya Satchidananda Navini Gora Shakti Svarupaya Rupa Nuga Varayate hmm. So somehow in this most auspicious day for us uh, although I'm totally unqualified most fallen most uh, wretched soul somehow the Vaishnavas have asked me to speak the glories of these two great personalities. Hmm. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chaksurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sigarave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manu Bistam Sapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dirati Svapadandigam Adadana Srinandantai Vridham Yache Puna Puna Srimad Rupa Padam Bhujo Dilisyam Janmanandani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gora Shakti Svarupaya Rupanuga Varayate Panchakalpatrubhya Staki Pasindu Vevacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Nama So in such a short class it's impossible to reveal the glories of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. We're extremely indebted to him because he was the first in our line of acharyas to try to preach outside of the Indian languages. Hmm? Preaching was going on in Hindi and uh, Bengali and Uriya also. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, began the preaching in English. In fact, he authored one book, Lord Chaitanya, His Life and Precepts, hmm, which somehow found its way to McGill University in Canada uh, in 1896, the birth year of our dear Srila Prabhupada. So this is very auspicious. Hmm. But to understand the real glories of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we have to understand the situation in which he was born into. At that time, British rule was going on. Uh, and the British, they did everything possible to uh, denigrate uh, Bedi culture and Indian culture. Mm. They simply made fun of everything. They said their astronomy would make a schoolgirl in, in England laugh. Uh, their uh, so-called Puranas and uh, other works are just completely uh, fantastic mythology. Uh, and they did everything in their power uh, to cause the Indians to neglect their culture. Hmm. Because their plan was everywhere else in the world, the British taught English to make the people civilized. But in India, they taught English to make the people uncivilized. Hmm? Because in every village, uh, there were so many Brahmins. Every Brahmin had a school in his house. Because that's the business of Brahmin, to teach. Hmm? Uh, so they were teaching in the local languages and teaching from the uh, Vedic scriptures. So they realized to make these people uncivilized, we have to break this connection. So we have to teach them English. So they made the uh, Indian people uh, uncivilized mm, by teaching English. Mm. Uh, people were uh, 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 actually becoming ashamed. Uh, this deity worship, just like we see today, the deity is so beautifully dressed. If you can't tell from here, this is an outfit embroidered with tulsi beads. Hmm? Sometimes they bring this wonderful outfit. This is all uh, embroidered with tosibis. Huh? 
and people were, they were calling this idol worship. Uh, simply because in their scriptures said there should, there should be not be graven images. But image means imagination. Hmm. The Lord's form is not imagination, uh, but it is specifically described very clearly in Vedic literatures. Hmm. Uh, it is very clearly described. In your scripture, you may not have any description, uh, uh, but in our scriptures, we have complete description. Hmm. So when the Lord's form is made according to the authorized scriptures, uh, uh, then uh, that is archivigraha, not idol, but archivigraha. It is not imagination. Uh, just like in their scriptures, they say that hallowed be thy name. So if God's name is holy, his form must be holy also. You may not know what that form is, but you're saying his name is hallowed. So his form must also be hallowed. Yeah. Here we're giving you the information of his form. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bhakti Vinod has written a very extensive article on this point. Mm -hmm. That this archa uh, that Krishna, being the supreme personality of Godhead, the controller of all energies, he can, ta he can take the a created energy and turn it back into the creator. Uh, just like an expert electrician, he puts some wires together and somehow uh, we're all somehow managing in this uh, brutal summer, of course now it's cooled down a bit, <laughs> um, by your air conditioner. And then he puts wires together in a different way and he creates a heater. Uh, so the Lord is the controller of all energy. So that created energy, he can turn it back into creator. He can appear himself within an image, being called by the Acharya uh, into the authorized form, just like hmm, Prabhupada always gave the example of the post box. Uh, in America, they're all red, white, and blue, of course, uh, mostly blue. And... Uh, if you put some box on the street and, put your, and paint it blue and red and throw your letter inside, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not authorized by the post office. But there is a box on the street that's authorized by the post office. If you put your letter in that, it's as good as going to the post office. Hmm? They will send their truck, they will take those, those mails and they will get delivered. Huh? So the Archivigra has the authorized form of the Lord. He agrees to change that created energy back into the Creator. It's not difficult for him. Mm -hmm. So this is a great science that they have no information. Uh, it was such that I remember the first time in 1974 we went to the temple in Delhi and what was that? Uh, Anandiketan. I don't know if anybody remembers that place. And people were so embarrassed by deity worship that the deities, Radha Partha Sarthi, they were upstairs. There was a little tiny room on the roof. Uh, where the deities were kept. Otherwise, it was a big hall where they had life membership meetings because people felt uh, they had been so brainwashed by the British, they felt embarrassed. Uh, this deity worship is a low-class thing. This is for tribals or things like that. But this is a great science. So Bhakti Vinod, he was dealing with all this. There's somebody came named Ram Mohan. He, did, he created some crazy thing called Brahmoism where he was trying to mix all complete speculations uh, uh, wild specula speculations hmm? made this Brahmo Samaj after Mahaprabhu disappeared so many Sahajyas appeared who completely misinterpreted a Lord Chaitanya's philosophy uh, and they were doing the most degraded things under the name of religion people came to think that Vaishnavism is some sort of degraded uh, uh, sex cult uh, uh, the excuse for making a living. They would go on the streets and chant Hari Nam and collect money and then go home and smoke their beaties and do all their other nonsense. So people had no respect. This is what Bhakti Vinod Thakur was up against. Hmm? Uh, uh. And he showed his whole pastime. He himself, he studied all the Western philosophies and uh, so many things 
then somehow or other he was, uh, began to read uh, the real teachings of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Hmm? And he began to show people and present it in a very respectful way and began to argue against all these uh, uh, unauthorized sects. Hmm? In fact, by his uh, Sajjana Tosini, he published one journal that became a very, very respectable journal in Calcutta, uh, move, uh, changing the hearts uh, of the Bengali elite, uh, that Mahaprabhu's uh, philosophy and teachings are the highest, the epitome of our Vedic culture. Hmm? Uh, so this is what Bhaktivinoda Thakur was up against. Hmm? And somehow or other, uh, uh, although he was born in very, uh, uh, he was actually born in opulence, but somehow that, as we know that Lakshmiji, she's chantal, uh, she's very fickle. So that house became, their family became very poor. He went to live with his grandfather and uh, so many things he had to suffer in his childhood. And he started out his life, uh, as a teacher, I think his salary was 20 rupees a month. Can you imagine? <laughs> that was a salary in the 1800s. <laughs> uh, but he was so learned and so uh, expert in dealings that finally he became a district magistrate. Even they made him the district magistrate of such a place as Puri. And this was not an ordinary thing. Uh, district magistrates generally, they were British, uh, but the British had so much faith in Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and he had such intelligence and such knowledge that he became the district magistrate of Puri. Hmm. This was not an ordinary thing. Hmm. And somehow or other, despite uh, all of his duties, he still managed to uh, write so many beautiful bhajans that Sri the Prabhupada was very fond of singing. Uh, he wrote so many beautiful uh, books. He published the books of the Goswamis. Even at that time, he could not find a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrit. Hmm? He couldn't find a copy of Sri Bhagavatam. He had to search very hard to find these things. Hmm? So he began uh, publishing so much literature because the, the commercial presses, they were simply interested in making money. So they were publishing all the nonsense of these uh, uh, sahajas and pr publish it very cheaply to make money. So they distributed thousands and thousands of these books to the villagers. Uh, were very simple. Uh, Prabhupada said that the Indian people, they're naturally Krishna conscious. Uh, somehow the British uh, tried their best to destroy it. Somehow it, uh, do the Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, Sri the Prabhupada. Uh, now we see uh, uh, the people are coming back to their culture. Uh, sometimes people, people complain to me, what well, Mangalarti, we can't even get inside the temple. I said, that's wonderful. <laughs> we see a whole, I remember the summers we were here alone. We'd have, you know, Gaur Artik all by ourselves. We just have wonderful Artik with ourselves, you know. Uh, uh, and now it's, it's, you know, well over 40 degrees and still we see Mangalarti, you can't get into the temple. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm. Uh, uh. So though they were, their original idea was somehow to destroy Vedic culture has become stronger and stronger now by the mercy of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Prabhupada. And we all are sitting here to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Mm. Uh. Uh, he began uh, this preaching and pointing out the real philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. He felt himself incompetent, so he prayed. He was in Puri at that time. Just imagine, we're just trying to run this tiny little temple. We have three temple presidents, and he was a district magistrate of Puri. You can imagine what a headache that the management was. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he still managed to write books and publish books and write his Sajjana Tosini and research where the real birthplace of Mahaprabhu and raise a family of, what is it, ten children? Uh, we can't imagine. 
Huh? But you see that sometimes we see somebody publishes his schedule, you know, he used to, you know, do his duties from this time to this time, then he would take rest, then he would eat, then he would, uh, you know, take some rest again, then he would write. And you see his schedule is just amazing. We're just embarrassed when we see that, you know. Huh? We couldn't possibly follow such a schedule. Hmm? And he uh, righted so many wrongs that were there in the Puri temple and so the offerings were not coming on time and so many. He did so many wonderful things. He's discovered so many. Uh, the, even the king himself was uh, uh, misappropriating money and he exposed that and so many things. He was a very powerful person. Hmm? And especially there was one guy, I always like this story. Uh, some, f some crazy fellow came up, Bishikena, claiming to be the incarnation of Mahavishnu. Uh, and of course the Britishers were very upset because he was telling, I'm going to throw these British out of India. <laughs> uh, uh, so Bhaktivinoda Thakur wasn't so much interested in helping the British, but he saw this guy was the foolish the simple, not foolish, but the simple people were being misled by this guy. So he felt it his duty to expose him. Hmm? And he had some mystical powers. He would make sparks come from his hair and do all kinds of funny things. So Bhaktivinoda took some constables and he came into, he was living in the jungle. Uh -huh. And he came there without even introducing himself. Uh, Bishikena says, Bhaktivinoda, why have you come? Uh -huh. I am the Supreme God, you worship me. Uh, and Bhaktivinoda challenged him that, uh, uh, how can an ordinary person be the Supreme God? Hmm? Uh, and then he told his constables to arrest this fellow. And then he made sparks fly from his sky, they were afraid. So Bhaktivinoda himself arrested him hmm? and threw him in jail. And then somehow or other, even Bhaktivinoda's family lost faith in him. They were all becoming sick because he was promising to finish off Bhaktivinoda uh, and his whole family. So they all became deathly sick, even Bhaktivinoda himself. His wife was begging him, please let this go, guy go free before we're all destroyed. Hmm? Uh, but Bhaktivinoda was determined that such cheaters must be exposed. Hmm? So even though he had a very high fever, he was lying in bed, hardly able to move excruciating fever. Somehow the day in court came and we see those pictures of Bhaktivinoda in his youth, you know, very robust and beautiful embroidered uh, 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 cloth and everything. And Bhaktivinoda, the time of court came, Dr. Vinod strode through the doors. Hmm? Uh, previously he'd been lying in the bed with a fever, then he's, the time of court, he strode into the court, he sat down, gave the verdict, the police were afraid to go near him, but there was one Englishman in the court who had read something about that the yogis keep their power in their hair, and he got out a bunch of scissors and <laughs> chopped off this guy's uh, jata, you know, and he fell helpless, and they threw him in jail where eventually he even died. I think he maybe committed suicide or something. So Bhaktivinoda, he was a very powerful personality. Huh? And he was always begging them to give him a post him in Krishnanagar or someplace close to Nabadweep. He wanted to research more. Finally, he threatened to uh, resign. So they gave him uh, uh, the, the uh, district magistrate of Krishnanagar. Then he spent every free, all of his free time uh, searching for the real place of uh, Mahaprabhu's birth. Because he had understood that the Ganga is always changing back and forth and back and forth. And the town of Nabadweep was only uh, 70, 80 years old at the time he was there. But Mahaprabhu's birth was 500 years before. So studying all the old maps, uh, and you see when you go to the Yoga Peach, you see there's a big depression, big lake next to that temple. That is Balal Digi. The importance of that is that uh, it describes how the, the king, his uh, uh, house was just near that. Actually, excuse me, not the king, but the Nawab. Uh, so how could he be disturbed by the kirtan if it was way over in where the present town of Nabadweep is? Because Mahaprabhu started his kirtan in Mayapur. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And finally, he brought Jagannath Das. He was initiated actually by uh, Bipin Bihari Goswami, but he concepted more as his guru, Sri uh, 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 Sarva ba uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, who was well over 100 years old and was so weak, uh, he had to be carried around in a basket by his servant Bihari Das. And when they came there and set the basket down, and Bhakti Vinod showed some place where even the Muslims neglected that place, only Tulsi grew there. Whatever they planted, only Tulsi came up. Uh, so they neglect, even they neglected that place. Hmm? And when uh, 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 Jagannath Das Babaji saw this place, although he was carried in a basket, he jumped uh, three meters in, this, in the air. Haribo! 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 And he had enough evidence that if you see right outside of uh, 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 the Yoga Pete, there's a post office. And so post office is everywhere. But what's so special about that post office? That even the British accepted his evidence and that post office name is Mayapur post office. You see next time you go, there's a little post office there. It's very important because Bhaktivinoda has such evidence that this is a real place. Mm -hmm. And he had such desire to preach in English. Huh? Uh, he begged his son also, Bhakti Siddhanta. Bhakti Siddhanta uh, spread. Uh, we know he created 64 Godiyamas all over the continent of India. And he sent some of his disciples uh, uh, to the West, to England, even to Germany. There's nice books about, oh, I can't remember his name. When Sanyasi was there went to Germany uh, and it was Srila Bhakti Siddhanta who inspired this was Bhakti Vinod's desire and Prabhupada uh, finally fulfilled that desire of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and spread Krishna consciousness all over the world mm -hmm. and even uh, he wrote a uh, beautiful song in English with perfect rhyme and meter now sometimes in school they give us the assignment, you know, in our uh, class that we have to write a poem. And to write a poem in our own language, that's always a big headache. We're sitting there all night trying to get, get ready for tomorrow morning's class, you know. Uh, but in his foreign language, he wrote with perfect rhyme and meter. Hmm? And my god brother Mangalananda has put it to a beautiful tune. Alas for those who spend their days in festive mirth and joy. The dazzly deadly liquid forms their heart for air employ. The shining bottles charm their eyes and draw their hearts embrace. Uh, uh, what is it? How can the... Uh, something... From what, some, uh, we, what we call disgrace. And he has beautiful... He says, a man's life to him a problem dark a screen both left and right no soul hath come to tell us what exists beyond our sight but then a voice how deep and soft within ourselves is felt man man thou art immortal soul the death can never melt but tell me not this is Prabhupada's preaching to the scientists in two lines but tell me not in reasoning cold that in life was made alone by earth's mechanic, lifeless rules, and to destruction prone. It's all the Prabhupada's preaching, huh? Tell me not in reasoning cold that life was made alone by earth's mechanic, lifeless rules. It's like our Sada, dear God, departed God brother Sadaputi has written that uh, mechanistic science, you know? And he even proved in a scientific way the existence of God. Huh? But tell me not a reason called that life was made alone by earth's mechanic lifeless rules and to destruction prone. Huh? My God who give us life and all alone the soul can kill or give it all the joys above his promise to fulfill. Huh? So many wonderful verses in this a beautiful song. Big long, it's about 22, 20, it's over 20 verses long. In perfect rhyme and just so beautiful song. Mm -hmm. So he was very insistent that we uh, preach outside of the uh, 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 
uh, Indian languages. And now we see Srila Prabhupada's books are translated. And we see on the, uh, you go to the Mashalit gift shop, you can see, you go in the library, you can see so many books in so many different languages. Even Arabic, somehow or other, uh, we were a little bit instrumental in that. Because uh, I have a very dear friend uh, named Rakesh in uh, uh, Dubai. His wife is here. Every, she stays here. She's left Dubai. She's staying in this hot sun and the cold, uh, very simple room. They're millionaires, but she's staying here very simply. Uh, uh, and uh, he's very anxious to spread Prabhupada's books. Mm -hmm. And my friend Artabandhu, he met one mullah. He was sitting in a doctor's office and under his cloth, because he's born in a Brahmin family, so he did Brahmin thread. He began asking him questions. Uh, and then he said, do you have any books? And he, saw, he asked me, I said, you have to have Satya Narayan. And Satya Narayan said, well, we have the Arabic Bhagavad Gita, but we don't have it printed yet. We do, we're looking for a donor to print it. So he remembered my friend Rakesh, who was very anxious to, for preaching. So Rakesh uh, printed that uh, uh, Arabic Bhagavad Gita uh, for Satya Narayan. Hmm? And then he gave, he went back to that Miller's house, he gave him a copy. He was so happy, he put it on his Facebook page, although he got, you know, everybody's saying, you're, this is a demon scripture, you're going to, you know, Allah will kill you, and this, and that. so many things. So many people were, people were writing to him, please get a copy for me. Somebody was writing from England, people from all over the world, and he's, he came back to, he said, I, I gave my copy away, please give me another copy. And, uh, Artabandhu, he got people to sponsor and he gave him like 30 Gitas because people, he had so many orders and this, this, even in Arabic language and Arabic people, we see everywhere we go in the, in the world, they're distributing this Arabic, people are very interested, you know, because they have no, they've just been suppressed and they don't have knowledge of the real information of Vedic literature. So anyway, we're all uh, uh, eternally indebted to Srila Bhaktivinu Thakur that we can sit here in this holy land of Vrindavan at the lotus feet of Sri Si Gornitai, lotus feet of Sri Si Krishna Balaram, lotus feet of Sri Si Radha Samson, the lotus feet of Prabhupada, the lotus feet, my dear God brother Bhakti Saranta, very nice sculpture, so he's made this beautiful deity of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So we can all sit here in this holy land where Krishna's pastimes, if you have the eyes to see, they're still going on here, this not ordinary place. Hmm? So it's all Bhakti Vinod Thakur's mercy that we're here. To the Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki, I could tell so many things more, but uh, uh, time is uh, running out. So, because it's also the day of uh, disappearance, day of Gadadhar Pandit. Mm -hmm. And Gadadhar Pandit, he hailed from uh, Chattagram, and now they call it Chittagong in Bangladesh. And we have a very nice temple there. And nearby is Pundarik uh, Bidinidi Dam. And that place, if you see it, is by Kunta on this planet. So beautiful green and so many flowers and beautiful Kund is there. And just next door, and we have that place now. He's kind of taken over that Pundarik Bidinidi Dam, Pundarik's place. And next door is the uh, Samadhis of um, Basudev Ghosh and Govinda Ghosh. Uh, and we're fixing those places up. So he was, that's just near Chittagong. And then he moved to Mayapur, and his father's name was Madhav Mishra. It was like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Jagannath Mishra. And from the very beginning of their childhood, they became the best of friends. Because we know Gadadhar Pandit, he's not other than uh, uh, Srimati Radharani. This Gaur, uh, Gauragana Desha Deepika says that person who was the son of Brisabhanu has now appeared as Gadadhar. Hmm? But he's very interesting because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we know, uh, Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam. He has taken the bhav and luster of Srimati Radharani. So uh, he has stolen the bhav of Radharani. So Gadadhar Pandit, although we see Radharani, she's always the left. Bama, she's left winger, always very feisty, but uh, Gadadhar Pandit, he's always very submissive hmm? because Mahaprabhu has taken that bhav away. So what's left, that is Gadadhar Pandit. 
very interesting personality. And they were the best of friends because it's none other than Radha and Krishna together again. Uh, and Nimai, we know he became a very great uh, scholar in the school and he was defeating everybody. He would argue uh, and uh, somebody would present some point. He would come d smash it to pieces and then he'd turn around and establish the same point. Uh, he was a big pundit. Got other pundit didn't like all this. And, and Nimai used to tease him all the time. <laughs> He would ask him questions and he'd smash the points and get out of Pandit was just <laughs> frustrated by this. He always kept, sometimes keep himself away from Nimai. Uh, and wondered why he's wasting his time and all these things. Later, when Nimai went to uh, Gaya and he met uh, Ishwar Puri, he came back a completely changed person. And they told Gadadhar Pandit, and now Nimai is completely changed, you have to see. He's calling a special meeting at uh, Shuklumber Brahmachari's house tonight. Uh, but somehow Gadadhar didn't get an uh, invitation. Mm -hmm. So he was sitting outside on the brand of Shuklumber Brahmachari's house uh, and expounding about Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And he began to, suddenly he went into Bhav and he began to weep. That, Where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? Uh, and Gadadhar Pandit had hid himself inside the house. He wasn't invited, so he hid himself inside the house. When he heard Mahaprabhu speaking, Nimai speaking like this, uh, he began to wail. And hearing this wailing, Mahaprabhu said, who's that crying? And he ran into the house and he embraced Gadadhar. Uh, he said, oh Gadadhar, you are right. I have wasted my life in, in useless argument. Uh, I wasted my life. Uh, now I just want to find Krishna. Where is Krishna? Please tell me. Hmm? And Gadadhar Pandit was his constant companion. And there's so many stories how one time Mahaprabhu was just in Bhav and he was saying, where is Krishna, where is Krishna? And he was crying. And Gadadhar said, he's inside your heart. Why are you crying? He began to rip his chest open. <laughs> and Gadadhar jumped on him <laughs> and, and stopped him. He <laughs> said, no, not like that. <laughs> and Sachi Mata, when she heard Ma Nimai crying, she had come, but she was afraid. When he was in this mood like this, she was afraid to come before him. And when she saw Gadadhar Pandit stop him from tearing open his chest, she begged Gadadhar, you please stay with him always. <laughs> he told you, you can protect him. Huh? So he also had the order of Sachimata. And they were always together wherever they went. Hmm? And somehow, Nimai had revealed his plans to take sannyas, and Gadadhar Pandit argued and argued and argued. And finally, Nimai convinced him that this was uh, proper for the propagation of Krishna consciousness. Uh, but Gadadhar couldn't live without Mahaprabhu. He also went to Puri. Uh, and he stayed there and he would read Srimad Bhagavatam and cry. Uh, uh, in fact, that, I don't know where that Bhagavatam is, but you can see it's all, all the words are washed out by his tears. That even, I think it was Naratam Das, he came there and he wanted to uh, study, but the book was completely washed out. And uh, finally, uh, uh, one time, there was a village, there was, excuse me, there was a garden. I can't remember, the, the trees were called Tota or the place was called Tota? Any Uriyas here? No Uriya devotees with us? Anyway, somehow that place, something to do with Tota. And Mahaprabhu uh, told Gadadhar, I have a great treasure for you, dig. And they began digging in that Tota garden. Uh, and suddenly he, he felt the mukat of some sort of deity. And he began to excavate more and more. And this beautiful deity of uh, uh, Gopinath appeared. Mahaprabhu said, I have a great treasure for you, dig. And he pulled out this deity of Gopinath. Now you spend your rest of your life worshipping this deity. Mm -hmm. And the deity was so enchanting. If you see, uh, uh, I can't remember who wrote it. He said, even if a staunch atheist will see the face of Gopinath, he, his heart will be moved. Mm -hmm. He's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we know if one time Mahaprabhu decided to go to uh, uh, Brindavan. Because mm -hmm. he'd only gone to Puri because Sachimata because they had tricked him. They brought him back to Advaita Acharya's house. 
telling him that the river was that that was the river Jamuna, which actually was Ganga. Though they described it wasn't untrue because the Ganga and Jamuna are flowing together at that point. Uh, so then he met Sachi Mata, and she says, "You go to Vrindavan because at that time there was no WhatsApp, there was no email, there was no, you know, <laughs> geo. How will I get information? You know." Uh, if you go to Puri, devotees are always going back and forth. Bengali devotees going back and forth to Puri. We'll get some information. So he acceded. He said, somehow I have got this body from you. You're my mother, so I have to obey. So he made his camp at Puri. Mm -hmm. and, but he went, still wanted to go to Vrindavan. So one time he decided to go to Vrindavan and Gadara Pandit uh, wanted to go with him. He said, no, you have taken Kshetra Sanyas. You have to stay here and worship Gopina. Uh, he said, wherever you are, that is my Kshetra. <laughs> uh, but he followed him all the way to the border of, of Orissa. And then Mahaprabhu got in a boat getting ready to go. And Gadara wanted to come. And actually, that, if you see that picture, that was my tiny part in the great uh, Chaitanya Church of Marathon because they were painting all these pictures and I was president of Portland, Oregon one time Prabhupada was in LA so I came down to LA and I was walking down the street and Jadarani walked out and said hey you come here because huh? they wanted to take pictures so they could paint faster you know the scene you know so that, that uh, Mahaprabhu was sitting in the boat motioning like this taking back that was me and Gadadhar Pandit fainting that was me. I had to pose several times for that one. She was never satisfied with the pictures. No, no, do it again. <laughs> and the, the Buddhist guru who brought the, un, the contaminated plate of food to Mahaprabhu and the eagle dropped it on his head. I, that was me. The old man standing behind him going with his cane going like that. That was me. <laughs> when he went to Nandagam and uh, asked if there's any deities. They said there's a cave inside. There's a very, very stout man and a little, uh, dainty little lady and a tree bungalow gual in between them. And he crawled up and he began to uh, caress the body. So that picture is also me. <laughs> then somebody goes, don't you know? He's the president of Portland. What are you doing? <laughs> and he said, no, I'm very happy to do some service in the great Chaitanya Church of Marathon. <laughs> So that was my tiny <laughs> service in it. So then, of course, that time he didn't go to Vrindavan. He went to uh, as many as acharyas and authors believe that actually he went to get Rupa and Sanatana and Jiva. Because he went north and said, oh, uh, Vrindavan is east, but he went uh, west rather. He went to the north. Uh, anyway, so many stories are there. The, the main uh, pastime of Gadar, or one of the main pastimes of Gadadhar Pandit was that uh, Mukundadatta uh, was always keep, keeping track on what great souls were coming to Puri. Mm -hmm. And one time he went to Gadadhar Pandit and told him, Great Vaishnava has come. You must come and see him. You know? So uh, Gadadhar Pandit, always anxious to meet great Vaishnavas, so he came to Mukundadatta and they went to the place where uh, Pundarik Bidinidhi was staying. And Pundarik Bidinidhi was staying there, beautiful silk cushions and silk cloth and you know, beautiful, um, man, uh, beautiful fashioned hair and they're always s spraying perfume on him and he was eating betel nut and his lips were all red and uh, uh, he looked like a perfect sensualist. Uh -huh. And Gadadhar Pandit, he saw him, he got some doubt in his heart. Uh -huh. This is a great Vaishnava? This is how he acts? Uh -huh. Mukunda Dutta could understood, could understand, so then he began to sing some verses from uh, Bhagavatam. Uh -huh. As soon as Pundarik heard those verses, he fell off of his couch. He began to roll on the floor, tearing his cloth, pulling his hair, and and crying in great ecstasy and uh, just by hearing a verse from Bhagavatam, you know. We're falling asleep, you know. <laughs> but hearing this verse, he was just rolling on the ground and crying. 
And then Gadadhar Pandit considered within his mind that I've committed a great offense within my mind. And he consulted with uh, Mukunda Dutta. That I think the only way that to get free from this offense is if I take initiation from him. And Mukunda said, yeah, this is a great idea. Then he went to Mahaprabhu. When Mahaprabhu heard, he said, yes, don't delay. Immediately you take Diksha from him. So he went back and discussed with Pundarik Bindanidhi. And on a very auspicious day, Pundarik Bindanidhi gave him the Diksha and gave him the Krishna Mantra. So he became the disciple of Pundarik Bindanidhi. So, uh, and there's one, somehow there's one pastime that later when I was on, I went to the Puri Prikama one time with our, uh, what is his name? Bhakti, uh, hmm? Bhakti Purushota Maharaj. And he told us that actually it wasn't, uh, uh, because we know that Toti Gopi is the only deity of Radha and Krishna, we see Krishna sitting down. And I've always heard the story that it was because Gadadhar Pandit couldn't reach anymore in his old age, he sat down. He said, and he said, no, actually, this is according to Bhakti Purushottam Swami, who's Uriya, who understands things and can read things. That Gadadhar Pandit, he was the dearest friend of uh, Mahaprabhu. So when Mahaprabhu left, he can no longer tolerate. Huh? And he was also quite old at the time, so he left. Hmm? And it was Mamu Takur. There was one fellow uh, that, uh, uh, Mama means uncle, but in Uriya you say Mamu. Uh, so Mamu took, took, Takur took over the worship from uh, uh, Gadadhar Pandit. And then, uh, and his old, Mamu Takur was already quite old. So he's having difficulty to put the garlands. Huh? And he was thinking of leaving the service. And Mahaprabhu and Krota Gobinath came in his dream and said, No, I can't live without you. He said, But I can't um, put the garlands anymore. He said, Don't worry about it. Hmm? I'll fix everything. So the next morning, uh, Mamu Thakur came. He opened the door and Krota Gobinath was sitting down. So this is the only deity you'll ever see. Uh, uh, Lord is sitting in Padmasana. Hmm? Hmm. And you'll see uh, there's a black Radharani there also that's very interesting. Because one time they stole Krishna's flute. And, uh, but they couldn't play it. And Krishna told them only a black person can play it. So Radharani became black to play Krishna's flute. <laughs> Anyway, there's uh, so many things we could say about Gadadhar Pandit also, but this is some of the few pastimes. Uh, and we, we sing his name every day, Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinoda. So he's part of our Panchatattva. Just like the other day we were, uh, he and Sri Vas are always on the same side because they're the worshippers. And the other three are the worshipped. Hmm? Uh, so he's Shakti Tattva, so he's one of the worshippers. So, unfortunately, time is going on. We have a few minutes left. If anybody has any questions, we'll try to give the answers to those questions. Silagadadar Pandit Ki Oh, that poem of Bhaktivinoda, if you want to look it up, it's called Sara Grahi Vaishnav. That one who takes the sar, the essence. Sara Grahi Vaishnav. Another verse. Why then this childish play in that which cannot be our own, which falls within a hundred years as if a rose are blown. <laughs> O Saragrahi Vaishnav, so thou art an angel fair, 
Lead, lead me on to Vrindavan and Spirit's power declare. <laughs> so many beautiful verses in this. No questions? So today at 12.45 we're all uh, again come, uh, assemble here and we'll have the Puspanjali and Artik for Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and they're announced 1.30 there's a beautiful feast so uh, honor of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Gadadhar Pandit. So we can all fall down at the very soft and wonderful lotus feet of that great personality who's delivered us uh, these great personalities, Bhakti Vinod and Gadadhar Pandit. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.